In addition to being a very versatile envelope or transit generator, something that makes the Delta V particularly special is that it has two VCAs built in. And when you use those, the envelopes now control the level of the VCAs. Now, how does this work? Normally, when I have a trigger going into the input of the envelope generator, the output is an envelope. And I have it patched to the filter cutoff. But as soon as you take something, such as, say, my noise output here, and patch that into one of the VCA inputs, now the signals are rerouted internally. Instead of the envelope coming to the output, it's controlling the VCA, and now the VCA's output comes to this output. You can see on the scope, the noise is now our modulation CV output. You can hear it how it's modulating the cutoff. You can tighten this up. Add a little bit of a noise spike there at the start of the sound. Use the attenuator to control how deep it is. Of course, since this is a VCA, you don't have to go through all of this trouble. You can go ahead and just take the output directly and run that to your output module. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the CV for now. Take my output from the Moog and instead plug it into the output once it's been copied through data of my Delta V. And now I have my noise source being enveloped by the Delta. And of course, you can play around with shapes to play around with the different character of this. Now I can keep pushing this. I don't have to use just the noise out of the Moog. The Moog does have a resonant filter. So what if we took the output of the filter instead, change the mix to be the noise. Now we have the cutoff control over the noise. And since I have gone ahead and set the jumper inside the Delta V so that one trigger input triggers both envelope generators, let's go ahead and use that second envelope generator. I'll take its output, run it through data so we can see what it looks like, and take that and run that back to my filter cutoff. So there I have a very short filter spike, but I can extend the release to add the noise. rumble on beyond the end of the filter's envelope. Or shorten up the whole thing by controlling the VCA. Play around with the shapes. Create something a bit fatter. Good noise shape sort of sound there. And again, this is separate from the filter's envelope. Good knocky sound there. Or make it fat. I could go ahead and put the Moog's filter into resonance. Move the cutoff. And now start creating some kick drums. Remember, I have an attenuator on the output of each side of the delta V, so I can control how deep that pitch bend is. And now I have some good kick drums. Decide how strong the beat is. So I have a noise element decaying afterwards. Shorten that up even more. Fatten it up. Shorten my release. There is still some noise in there coming through. A bit more of a pitch bend for a little bit more of a tick. Noise resonant filter, Delta V, got a nice little percussion synthesizer. But there's other keyboard tonal things you can do with this arrangement as well. 
Another technique where having a VCA paired with an envelope generator comes in very handy is to control modulation depths. Quite often you want to have dynamic control over how deeply you're modulating another parameter inside your synth. So let me magically remove the patch cables from the percussion example, and now let's patch up some modulation depth examples. Let's take frequency modulation for example. If I just took the sine wave out, my disting here, and went straight into the linear FM input on my Moog here, I may have a very interesting sound, but I'd love for that to change over time. Well, the way for that to happen is to patch a sine wave through a VCA controlled by an envelope generator and have that output come back to my linear FM input. An added bonus is that the delta V has an attenuator on the output of the VCA, so I can also control the overall depth from there. We'll start with maximum depth. We saw a slow attack decay, increase the modulation, bring it back down again. It's typical to have a very fast attack, make something snappy out of that. Sharpen up the shape. Now you don't always modulate at full depth. In this case, this thing really overdrives the mode for modulation. So you make it much more of a cultured splat at the start of the sound. And again, since in my Delta V, I have set the jumper for the trigger to input number one to be copied to input number two, I can go ahead and use that second envelope's output back for my filter cut off. Now I'm having the filter close down after the FM effect is done. No FM. Envelope to FM. Very nice. Of course, you can do other modulations as well. It doesn't need to be an audio rate oscillator. It could be an LFO, a low frequency oscillator. Instead of taking audio out from another oscillator, I'm going to go ahead and look for the Moog's triangle output from its own LFO and run that into the VCA instead and play around with depth and slow attack to create a vibrato effect. <laughs> well, that's a little bit crazy right there, but slow it down. Open up the filter so we can hear what's going on. Slow down the release as well, and let's lower the depth. Now here's a case where I might want to shape the peaks and then falls back down again. So let's go over to this range. Lower my depth again. Now you notice that that vibrato effect is decaying even though I'm holding a note down. Well, remember with the delta V, the trigger makes it an attack decay generator. The slew now makes it an attack sustain release generator. So now I keep that vibrato as long as I have my note held down. As soon as I release the key, fades away. We'll make it fade away faster here so you can hear that it does die out before the VCA does. Nice little delayed vibrato effect. I'll be honest with you, when I first heard about the Delta V I went, oh great, another dual attack decay generator. Does the world really need another one of these? But it's so well thought out and has so many nice features including these built-in VCAs, that I've quickly fallen in love with this module. As a matter of fact, it's going to go into my performance case, so I can use it even more often.